Welcome to the Rusted Garden Homestead. It's the beginning of August. Over the last three days, I planted about 30, 35 different plant varieties by seed into my garden. I want to go over all of them with you. You can plant warm crops now in August, cool crops, and even herbs. Just like my tomato plants right here, we get beat up in the July heat and humidity, the August heat and humidity, and sometimes we stop planting, we get discouraged. I just want to encourage you to get some of these cool crops in the ground, even another wave of cucumbers and zucchini. As it cools down, we'll get our energy back, but so much can still grow in your garden, especially if you direct seed it now in August. What's really important, and I want to stress for this video, is that every garden's different. You're going to see a lot of videos on crops that you can plant in August. What's important to understand is on the back of the pack, it'll say days to maturity, and that's usually after germination. Throw that out the window. With warm soil, warm air temperatures, seeds germinate much more quickly. There's an example in here of how quickly arugula germinates and they mature much more quickly. You're trying to get the timing down, so if you're putting in more warm crops now, they get to maturity, you get a week or two of harvesting, maybe three weeks, before frost comes. When you're doing the cool crops, you're getting them in now to use the warmth, but you really want them maturing mostly as the temperatures begin to fall. In order to figure that out, you can't just rely on me saying, hey, it's August 6th, plant all this stuff. Plant a couple seeds now of a specific variety, beginning of August some more in the middle of August, some more at the beginning of September. This way you'll figure out the timing of how long you have to plant warm weather crops and when does the frost come and take them. You also get the timing down of when to put the cool season crops in the ground so that they mature into the cool weather. So this video will show you 35 plants that you can plant today. Please check out my blog, The Rusted Garden Journal. You can find a link in the video description and I will have this list in there for you. You don't need to take notes and I'll put more information uh, in a blog article about these vegetables that you can direct seed. All right, so let's get started with, I'm not sure what it is looking, <laughs> looking back, but we're gonna go through 35. Real quick, I realized when I was going through editing of the video, I wrote on there, that's actually black, that's actually blue, back there for the spinach is blue. Blue meant cool weather crops, black meant warm weather crops. You can't tell the difference, so in the video description I will list everything that I'm talking about in the video and just write cool or warm next to it so you know. I'm just not going to go over a list of 35 vegetables you can direct seed now. I'm going to show you how to plant them, give you some ideas. Also go over ways you can use shade to help protect the plants. So this is just a bamboo stake, a baking tin, and a clothespin. I have a video on this I did just before this one. I'll put it in the video description. That will pr provide shade, keep things cooler. But I'm also going to show you how I use corn, sunflowers and different crops to shade the soil and plant some of the cool weather vegetables into that. There's so much you can grow in August for your fall garden. Set up the bed, weed it, we don't need to get too fancy. If you don't have compost, any organic granular fertilizer works. Just a light scattering around, you could do both. I have a lot of compost, so I'm going to want to just scatter down about an inch, half an inch, across the bed. There's plenty of nutrients in here from how you took care of your bed during the summer. And we're going to use water-soluble fertilizer on certain plants. So please follow me. I'll show you how I take care of all the plants that we're planting today. That's the basic setup. Because we're direct seeding, you want to loosen up the soil a couple inches and that will make seeding a lot easier. We'll, we're going to do the same thing for containers. The container setup isn't much different. Because you're growing in a container, a lot more nutrients are pulled out of here. So you can be a little more heavier handed with your organic granular fertilizer. That's like a handful, one and a half in there, half a handful in each of those. And you would mix this into a good six inches. Again, if you have compost, that is the best stuff. And a good amount of compost does wonders. And I would just work this really into, you know, about half of the depth of the container. And we are ready to start planting. I'm going to go through this pretty quickly. I have planting videos and all that kind of stuff for most of these crops. Check out my blog, The Rusted Garden Journal, for a complete list of all the vegetables we're planting today. I'll also include, you know, maturity dates and just some other information 
that you don't have to take notes off of this video. Just go over to the blog. So wherever you see blue written on the tags, on the markers, that means it's a cool weather crop, it can take a frost. So we're gonna do carrots, turnips, and beets. For carrots, I'd like to space them out, out one to two inches, just a finger hole, quarter inch deep, it's perfect. Turnips, a little bit more, two to three inches between the seeds. For carrots and turnips, put in two seeds. If they both germinate, go ahead and remove one when they're about an inch tall. You don't want to wait around for a single seed to germinate. So two to three inches apart. If you're worried about the spacing, I tend to plant things much more closely together. Just an, add an inch onto there. And I like putting the markers to the right. So everything to the left, two rows of carrots. Everything to the left, it's going to be turnips. And then over here I have beets. Beets, uh, two, three, four inches apart, doing three rows. Beets are actually a pod. So when you plant a beet seed, there's multiple seeds in there. So it's just one pod per hole. And you're probably going to see two or three, maybe even four, beets sprout out of there. You can thin them down to one or two plants. That's perfectly fine, but we've got carrots, turnips, beets. They can grow from the early August into the cool weather and they can take a frost. Perfect crops to get planted in your August garden right now. We're going to plant dill, cilantro, bush beans, spinach, and Swiss chard. Swiss chard gets really large, so we're just going to go with one plant in a 10 gallon container. You can find all these fabric pots at my seed shop. Spinach, I like to put in about nine holes per 20 gallon container and beans this is a about a five gallon container i'm putting four in there you just press them down to about a half an inch deep water them in the whole key for your august garden going into the fall it's really hot check out my video i'm going to show you peas in a second but i did a full video on peas and using shade cloth you can use shade cloth to cool the soil and your cool weather crops will do a lot better like your spinach and your swiss chard in germinating because that sun just comes down and bakes the soil really the top couple of inches up to 100 110 degrees so shade cloth is your friend but you know watering every other day really keep this soaked the sun can dry this out quickly especially if you're not using shade cloth when these all germinate get to about an inch or two we can put mulch down but for seeds right now you don't want to mulch over this they can have a hard time breaking through that mulch there are so many ways to plant peas this is a 20 gallon container you could just do one pea per hole there's going to be nine holes here we're going to press these down to about an inch or you could put two in there just make sure you give them something to trellis up i like using a tomato cage and you're just going to press these down to about an inch now i'm not going to show you the planting of every seed i mean you get the basic idea but peas about an inch deep really step again on the watering and you're going to have a beautiful fall garden next is bunching onions they can take a frost but you can grow these through the whole season and I just take a space like this, it's loosened again, a couple inches deep. And maybe about this many seeds. And I just sprinkle them across the space. Nothing too fancy. They're bunching onions, also sometimes called spring onions. Just scatter them around and then work them into the top quarter inch. And again, make sure you water everything in and keep them well, well watered. So bunching onions, I think we're at 10 or 11 crops you can plant in August for your fall garden. Another crop you can plant is arugula. Now arugula really doesn't like the warm soil. So August, first week of August here in Maryland is a little bit early for it, but I am planting this right along here where I planted arugula earlier in the spring. I have corn growing. The corn is going to grow up, shade this area, keep the soil cooler, and arugula is going to enjoy that shade. A couple of things. Because each garden is a little bit different, plant a lot of these plants, you know, maybe August 2nd, plant some again on August 14th, plant some again September 1st. This way you get an idea of what time might be the best for these different cool crops in relationship to your summer heat. You really don't know until you give it a try. Planting the arugula one to two inches apart. There are actually two seeds in each hole. That's why I'm not <laughs> showing you the seeding of everything because it's hard to see them anyway. But about a quarter inch deep, cover it over. Now a bonus 
Already growing in there is arugula. That seeded itself from the plants that I kept for my spring crop. I let them form pods, let the pods break, and it's dropped arugula all over, over the place. We could actually be doing a video on using corn as a place to grow your peas, that it's going to provide shade, but that's a future video. So arugula is the next crop. I'm also putting in here some peas. That was three pea seeds about an inch deep. Same thing over here. Peas will also provide shade and I have a trellis set up here nicely to really support the pea growth. The corn, just FYI, the southern sun's right over there, western sun's over there, so it's in a place that it's going to drop shade over the arugula. I'm going to keep stressing the importance to test when you put seeds into your garden in the late summer. The warm crops that are going in late to see if they mature before the frost comes, and then the cool crops you know, timing wise, when are you putting them in the ground so that they flourish and they don't bolt? Mustard greens, pak choy, bok choy, Asian greens, as I've been saying, bolt really quickly. August 6th really isn't the right time to plant mustard greens. It's too warm, but I'm putting them closer to my horseradish. It will keep shade in this space, but I'm only doing four plants. So just do a couple of plants and that's about the spacing, you know. I'm only doing four plants. See how these grow over the next three weeks. And then I'll be putting in more mustard greens September 1st. That's when I tr traditionally put them into the ground. But test seed and then take notes and then you'll be armed for, you know, a better garden next year. More cool weather crops. Daikon radish, the long radish. They take a little bit longer to mature. Romaine lettuce, pak choy. Strategy is under my nectarine tree. There is more shade being cast here. You could also put shade cloth over your cool weather crops if you want to kind of push them out earlier. Pak choy, four to six inches apart, you know, something like this. One hole, two hole, two or three seeds, thin down to one. Romaine lettuce, same thing, about four inches apart. If you want full-size lettuces, uh, like bib lettuce, romaine lettuce, four to six inches is usually best. If you're doing it as cut and come again, where you're just cutting the lettuce when maybe it's this tall, you can put them two inches apart cut off the leaves, leave the roots in there. But a row of, actually two little rows of romaine lettuce, and then the daikon radishes, the seeds are in there, putting in two seeds per hole. And it's really hard to say, quarter inch, half inch, about a quarter inch is fine for all these seeds. Two radishes, you can leave two radishes in here. They will tend to push themselves apart. So maybe two inches of space. You can thin down to one if you want. But this is gonna be a shadier area for my cool weather crops. These are the last of my second wave of beets. They'll be gone in probably another month. Over here, I'm planting cabbage. I like uh, the red cabbage. You don't have to plant your fall crops for complete maturity. So I don't necessarily believe I'm gonna get a full head of red cabbage, but I love the leaves. They're perfect in salads and stir fries. If I were planting for full size heads, 18 to 24 inches for cabbages. Because I'm gonna be mostly collecting the leaves, I'm doing about, I don't know, 12, 14 inches apart. We got a hole right here, here and here, and then one, two, three over there. And then I tucked one right in there. Two or three seeds again, thin to the best seedling in you know a week or so remember that seeds are going to germinate much more quickly in the summer in august and they're going to get to maturity size much more quickly so that's one of the benefits you could also do this with broccoli cauliflower and brussels instead of 18 to 24 inches probably depending on the variety 12 to 18 inches apart so those are other crops that you can plant and again um, a lot of times I like to put in transplants for these plants, but you can try seeds, take notes, and you can eat all the leaves of the plants that I just mentioned in case things don't fully mature. So zucchini is a warm weather crop, the frost will damage it. But beginning of August, this is going to mature and be ready in under 45 days. So I just drop in three seeds, about a half an inch to an inch deep, cover them over, and this will be a third or fourth round of zucchini for me in my garden. But zucchini, cucumbers, we're going to do that in a second. Perfect to plant in your August garden for your fall garden. Another warm weather crop, cucumbers. You can put in another round in August. And as long as your frost isn't really coming towards the end of October, they're going to mature and you're going to have some delicious cucumbers. I put in three seeds, about a half an inch deep. I will keep one or two plants depending on, you know, what's going on. 
one plant, maybe 12 inches apart, two plants a little bit further. So many different ways to plant. The whole goal though is get some cucumbers into your garden in August. You'll appreciate these warm crops for your fall garden. Spinning over here, you can see all the shade. This is from my second round of, actually my third round of sunflowers. I'm going to plant corn salad or matcha in here. Every one to two inches, drop two or three seeds, thin down to one if you want. This grows really quickly, but it really likes the shade. And I'm just going to put in a little row of corn salad right in here, protected by the sunflower seeds. Another group of warm crops that you can plant are cantaloupe, melons, even pumpkins. They should be about 70 days, 75 days to harvest. These are Minnesota midgets. They're smaller. I'm putting two in a 10 gallon container. Three seeds, about half an inch deep. Water them in well. You cannot forget watering, you know, just about every day or every other day. That's going to be perfect for the cantaloupe. I will trellis them up there. This is a shorter uh, day to harvest and it's a smaller cantaloupe so they're going to do really well in here. Chives are another great herb you can plant. Huge handful of chives just sprinkled in this 10 gallon container. They're not going to be something you can really harvest now. Cool weather crops, warm weather crops, they can take a frost, they're perennials. So all you have to do is get them germinated They'll establish and it'll come back really strong next year. So they're perfect to plant in your garden now. And you may get enough, who knows, but they're going to come back next year. And then you can divide these up and put them into other places in your garden. We're also going to do fennel. Fennel is typically grown when it's warm, but it can do okay going into, you know, your fall garden. In there, three holes, one, two, three. Three plants per about a 10 gallon container or even in a garden in a space like this. About a half an inch deep waterman well. It's going to be perfect. It takes 90 days to maturity when you read the pack, but the packs are not accurate when you're planting into warm soil and, you know, warm ambient temperature. Everything's going to germinate much more quickly. So we have fennel in there. So you can really mix in the herbs along with your warm crops and your cool crops. One thing that's really important in this video is to understand how quickly things are going to germinate. So you have more time to grow than you might think. This arugula went in on Friday 8-4. Today is Sunday 8-6. Went in the morning on that day. You just saw me plant it. It's already sprouted up because it's so warm. Your seeds are going to germinate more quickly. They're going to mature more quickly. You just have to get that right balance of warmth and then them growing into the fall when a cool season's coming so that they reach you know, peak flavor and peak maturity. People don't realize potatoes can be planted several times over the season. Potatoes can be ready in as little as 70 days. These are just plain old red Pontiacs. They're not even chitted, which means I'm not waiting for them to sprout a little bit. You do that in the spring because the ground is cold. When the soil is warm, potatoes are going to really take off and you're just going to drop them about, I don't know, four inches deep. Let them go. I'll be planting potatoes in a 100 gallon container. You can also plant celery now. Celery does take about 90 days, but because of the warmth, everything's going to speed up and grow more quickly. Every four inches, that's just slightly pressed in. They sort of like to be on the surface, slightly covered. Celery sometimes is hard to germinate, so you want to drop in five or six seeds, just thin down to one plant. But I did one, two, three, four, five, six plantings in here, slightly cover them, and they're going to be good to go. Additional cool weather crops, I'm putting in kohlrabi here and about every four inches to six inches. If you have a lot of pressure for white flies and other pests on your brassicas, go ahead with a greater spacing. It makes it easier to manage them. But one, two, three, right down there. And then I'm doing one, two, three, four, five, six, all the way down. So three rows of kohlrabi. Again, put in two seeds, thin to strongest plant when they're about an inch tall. In here, I'm putting endive. It's one of my favorite cool weather crops about every four inches apart on a row down here and a row on this side. It gets really wide. It's kind of stocky, but it gets wide. Right down the middle, they're going to actually mature first, are just globe radishes. French breakfast even uh, germinate and produce more quickly for harvest. Every inch, one, two, three, four, five, six, all the way down. So you can combine plants together. I may put a shade cloth over here. And in that corner, butter crunch lettuce, and I've actually only put in four. I already planted those, but I did about an eight inch spacing because they do get pretty big and I want these to go grow to full size. 
Two of my favorite cool weather crops, kale and collards. I'm going to space them about 12 inches apart. If you have a lot of pressure from white flies, maybe you want to go to 18 inches. This just gives you more room, more air circulation, and it's a little bit easier to treat. But I have one, two holes, quarter inch deep, and then two for the collards. And again, two or three seeds, thin to the strongest plant, and just keep them watered. Parsley is another herb that can take a frost, so it's perfect to plant now in August. I take a good amount of seeds, and they're going to go into a 10-gallon container. And these will actually mature enough that you'll be able to use it and just scratch them in quarter-inch deep. They're biennials, so they're going to usually survive through the winter here in Maryland. They're going to come back next year. I will divide them up. Their second year being biennials, they're going to want to flower, but the flowers really attract pollinators, butterflies love them. Um, so they're great to have in a garden. So I'm going to use this little 10 gallon pot to have some parsley towards the end of fall probably, but also I'm going to divide this up come spring and put it throughout my garden. So we planted about 30 crops in August. I did this over five days and there are just so many plants that you can direct seed right now into your gardens. You do want to experiment, you know, put some in now, put some in a shady area, see what happens. And then you'll see when they mature and you'll be able to adjust for next year. But we put in 30 additional crops. The warm weather crops are starting to get beat up, finish here. So I have the new wave of warm weather crops, really, you know, cucumbers, um, zucchini, etc. But I have all these delicious cool weather crops coming in. It's going to be a lot easier to take care of the garden when the temperatures break, when it's much cooler. And you want to make sure you have plants in so that you have a garden to enjoy really in September, October, and November. A lot of times we get burned out. I understand that. But see if you can get some plants in the ground now. Maybe you have transplants, but you can really direct seed. It's a lot easier. You don't have to spend money on transplants. You don't have to grow transplants, and you'll have a beautiful fall garden. Thanks so much for watching. Please check out my seed shop at therustedgarden.com, and please check out my blog, The Rusted Garden Journal, because I will list all these plants with some more information on my blog. Thanks for watching.